So guys, welcome to VRD Nation. Today we are going to talk about how to select the best laptop for trading, right? So if you are someone who is just starting out in the world of trading, or if you are someone who is thinking of buying a laptop, but you are confused exactly which brand to buy, what configuration to have, then this video is for you. Now, without any further ado, let's get started, right? Now, the first question that you need to ask yourself is that what kind of a trader am I? Because the answer to this question will decide what kind of a laptop will be ideal for you, right? So for all practical intents and purposes, we can classify traders in three broad categories, passive traders, active traders and professional traders. Now a passive trader is one who primarily does positional trading, right? So let's say, for example, taking a couple of trades in a month, holding them for four weeks or six weeks or maybe a couple of months, right? Or it can be also be a combination of positional trading and long-term investments. Now, the second category is that of active traders, and I'm sure a lot of you would belong to this category. So an active trader is one who takes trades more frequently. So you probably are taking swing trades or intraday trades. You are scanning for stocks. You are setting up alerts, or probably you're thinking about setting up algo trading, right? So that is the typical profile of an active trader. Now, the third category is that of professional traders who trade for a living. Now in this particular video, we will focus on the first two categories because majority of you who are watching this video, you will belong to either of these two categories. Uh, for the professional traders, we will make a separate video because uh, the configuration and the kind of setup that a professional trader needs is very, very different. And what I will do is I will take my own example of how I have set up my own system. So that is going to be a different video. It's going to be actually a very fun video. But as of now, let's focus on these two categories, which I'm sure you belong to. Now let's get started with the configuration. And the first question that we need to ask ourselves is Windows or Mac, right? So Windows based operating system or iOS, that is like the first question that you need to answer yourself. And if you are a passive trader, then you can go for either. It doesn't really matter. You can go for Mac or you can go for Windows based operating system because the requirements that you have, they are very simple and either of these operating systems are more than capable for taking care of your requirements. But if you are an active trader, then you definitely, definitely need to go with Windows based operating system because a lot of these applications that you require to be installed on your laptop, you will realize that they will not work on iOS, right? And this is by the way, my own experience. I was an Apple user for a very long period of time. And when I started getting more and more active in trading, what I realized was that many of these applications, some of them are broker based, uh, brokers, uh, desktop based platforms or these specialized software such as Ami Broker or Ninja Trader, they don't really work on Mac and they're not designed for them. And I don't think they will ever be designed for iOS. Right. So and I know it hurts because a lot of us, you know, we are like, you know, hardcore Apple uh, fans and, you know, we like to use Mac and iPhone and all this stuff. But the reality is that as far as trading is concerned, the ecosystem that has been designed it is designed around a Windows operating system. So my advice is that, you know, stick with the ecosystem, stick with Windows, you will be fine. But let's say you are a diehard fan of Apple, you are a diehard fan of iOS, and you still want to make it work. There are ways in which you can do it. There are ways in which you can install Windows based applications on Mac, but it's not very straightforward. So probably we'll make another video about that. But uh, my advice, if you ask me, is to stick with Windows. Now, the next thing that we have to decide is which brand of laptop to buy, right? And there are so many different brands out there. It's very, very hard for us to choose which one to go with. Now, at the time of buying the laptop, it doesn't really matter because most of these laptops, they will work fine for the first couple of years. There's no issue at all. But after the first couple of years, you will start seeing some kind of issues with our laptop, right? Sometimes let's say the laptop is overheating. Sometimes the laptop is getting slower. Sometimes let's say we can even spill coffee on our laptop and we need to get it repaired. Now, at that point of time, you will realize that depending on the brand, depending on the company that you bought the laptop from, there are some authorized service centers near your area where you can get it fixed, where you can get the genuine parts. And there are some companies out there, you will not find any service center to get it repaired from, or you will have to rely on some local guy to fix it. And if you do that, then of course, uh, you are at a danger of, you know, having wrong parts into your laptop. And of course, things can go very wrong from that point onwards. So, so in my experience, there are two companies uh, who have a decent network all around India for, you know, authorized service and, you know, genuine parts. Those are HP and 
Dell. Right? So if you buy one of these laptops, you most likely will find an authorized service center near you where you can get it fixed. So my suggestion is either you stick with HP or you stick with Dell and you most likely will not go wrong. Now the next criteria that you have to keep in mind is the processor or CPU as some people like to call it. Now think about the processor as the main engine of the computer, right? So the more horsepower the processor has, the faster it can process the data and the streaming information and the less chances you will have for slowness in order placement or any other activity that you're performing on the laptop. Now, until a few years ago, Intel was the market leader, but nowadays AMD is also doing fine. So you can also think about that. Now, personally speaking, I only had experience with Intel, so I can only speak about that. Now, when it comes to Intel, you can safely ignore Intel Celeron and Intel Pentium, right? Because they are relatively slower. They are not up to the mark that we need. So from a trading perspective, we need to focus on Intel Core series, within which you have i3, i5, i7, and now even i9. And as the numbering goes, right? So three, five, seven, and nine, the higher you go, the better is the performance. Now within each of these, Intel has also given the dimension of generation. So you can have eight generation, nine generation, 10 generation, or 11 generation. And again, the higher the generation, the better is the performance. So here is the thing. If you go with Intel i5, and any generation above nine, it can be nine, it can be 10, it can be 11. It would perfectly serve fine for both active traders and passive traders. You don't need anything more than that. But let's say you have a higher budget, you want more horsepower. So what you can do is you can go uh, to i7 or even i9, but remember to stay above the ninth generation. Don't go below that. Now let's talk about the memory or RAM. So RAM is the memory your computer uses when the machine is powered on, right? So let's say, for example, you are scanning for stocks, you are running algos, you need the RAM and the processor to work together to get the speed that you need. Now, again, my job is to make things simple for you. So without getting too technical, let me just tell you right now that if you are a passive trader, you can manage with 8 GB RAM that is going to be more than sufficient for you. And if you are an active trader, you can work with 16 GB RAM. You don't need more than that. Now, if you are again, if you have a higher budget, you want to go for, you know, faster speeds and scalability, then you can go with uh, 32 GB or 64 GB. But you don't need that much only for trading purpose, right? Uh, I mean, if you want to do something else, that's fine. But for trading purpose, I think this configuration is fine. What you can also do is look for a laptop where there is a provision for upgrade. So a lot of these laptops, they will give you the capability of upgrading in future. So if you are going with, let's say, 8 GB RAM right now, and later in future, you want to upgrade to 16 or even 32. If it has the capability, at least you know that you would be able to upgrade it without having to buy a completely new laptop. Now, the next one is going to be very simple. That is the hard drive. And all of us already are, I'm sure, are aware of that. So hard drive is a place where the computer stores information. Right? So all the files and you know the videos and everything that we have on our computer that's stored in the hard drive. And generally speaking, the bigger the hard drive, the better it is. Uh, now there is one new technology in hard drive that is called solid state drive, that is SSD drive. And the beauty of SSD drive is that the retrieval of information from these are faster. So if you are looking for a laptop, I will recommend you to look for laptops that have SSD drive. Now, as far as the size of storage is concerned, I think an SSD drive with 500 GB will be good enough for passive traders. And for active traders, maybe uh, SSD drive with one terabyte, I think that's going to be on the higher end. But if you can afford it, that will be ideal. Now, the next criteria is the screen size, right? Now trading, when it comes to trading, a lot of things that we do in trading is very visual in nature, right? So we are looking at the charts, we are, you know, identifying some patterns. So when you are processing some information visually, you need the screen to be a little bit bigger so that you can, you know, see the big picture, so to speak, and sometimes can also multitask, right? So if you are a passive trader, you don't need a lot of screen, but at the very least, I will say that if you have a 15 inch screen or a little bigger than that, it will be good for you. You can, you don't need any additional screens. But if you are an active trader, then I will recommend that along with the laptop screen, you also need a separate monitor, which is also called as an extended uh, setup, using which you can do multitasking. Right? So on one screen, you have, let's say, your charts, and on the other screen, you have your execution platform. So you can look at the charts and you can place the orders at the same time without having to do Alt-Tab and you know switch between the screens. 
So uh, that is something to keep in mind. And when it comes to the monitors, I think uh, both HP and Dell, they have great monitors. You will not go wrong with either of them. And when it comes to this additional monitor, I would say that go with 20 inch to 24 inch, somewhere in between, depending on your comfort level, you will be fine. So guys, these were the key features that you need to look for in a laptop from a trading perspective. Now I'm going to tell you some accessories that you also need to keep in mind. First thing first, you have to make sure that your laptop has inbuilt speakers and good speakers because for setting alerts, for example, you will need that sound to tell you that there is something going on. Secondly, make sure that you have Microsoft Office installed or you get it installed after buying the laptop because for documentation and a lot of other purposes, you will need the Microsoft Office suite. You will need the Word, you will need the Excel. I mean, a lot of this will be Excel based, right? So you need Excel and sometimes you will also need PowerPoint. So make sure that you have Microsoft Office installed. The next thing that you have to make sure, which by the way, goes back to the monitors that we talked about, that your laptop has graphic card that will enable the HDMI output to the monitor, right? So most of these laptops, they already have it. But just in case, you always have to make sure that yes, the laptop does have the graphic card to be able to project the screen on multiple monitors. After that, I will say look out for at least two to three USB ports because they come in very handy when you're plugging in, a, let's say, an external speaker or you are inserting another flash drive that will come in very handy. So guys, these were the main configurations and if you go with them, I'm sure you will find the perfect laptop for you. And if you go to websites such as Amazon or similar websites, they have, you know, these uh, on the left hand side, they have all these different criteria. So all you have to do is, you know, go there and check all these parameters that we talked about, right? And you will automatically see the results that they have at that point of time. Now, what will happen is that in terms of cost, you will see that the configurations that we have talked about, they will range somewhere between 50,000 rupees to 1 lakh rupees, right? So if you are a passive trader, you can easily manage with a 50,000 rupees laptop. But if you are an active trader and you want to go a little bit fancier, then you probably will have to shell out about 1 lakh rupees. Now let me give you a few pieces of advice that will help you buy a better laptop. The first thing is that don't think about what you need right now. Right? So think about what you would need, let's say, two years from now or three years from now. Because when it comes to a laptop, the typical life uh, cycle of a laptop is about, I would say, three to five years. So if you're buying a laptop, imagine yourself three years from now, what kind of requirements you might have. And even if you have to spend a little bit more to ready yourself for that stage, I think it will be a better idea to do that right away. Now, my second advice is that always buy a laptop from an authorized dealer or a distributor, right? So never buy laptops from local shops because I know that there are local shops around us, you know, that are selling the laptops at cheaper prices. But and some of them are reliable, but some of them are not. And it is very hard for us to say that the parts that are in that laptop and so you'll be spending like 50,000 rupees or 60,000 rupees, right? You don't know that what you have paid for, is it a genuine part or it is a duplicate one, right? So if you are spending that much of money, pay a little bit more and have, you know, the genuine parts and buy it from someone that you can trust so that tomorrow you don't have to worry about the parts being fake or, you know, all the issues that come with the duplicate parts. Now, my third advice is that before you buy anything from anywhere, right? physically go to a store, Reliance Digital or some of these stores that are out there and see that model physically. Now, sometimes you may not have the exact model, but something similar of the same brand. Because see what happens is when we see a picture on Amazon, right? it looks very different in pictures. But when it actually gets shipped to our house, when we physically see it, it looks very, very different. And this is specifically true when it comes to the screen size. A lot of times when we see the pictures, we think that, you know, it's a big screen size, but when you actually see it, it looks very small. So my advice is make a trip to your local shop, see the size of the screen and the other things, make sure that the look and feel is what you are comfortable with. And after that, you can buy from anywhere. I mean, you want to buy from there, you can buy from there, or you can buy from Amazon. Whatever you want to do, at least have a look and feel first before you place the order. Now, my last advice is that, Forget about buying a perfect laptop, right? So I know what happens to a lot of us that, you know, we are searching for laptops on Amazon. We are spending hours and hours and then we are going for all these different reviews, reading through the reviews and looking at the pictures. And then we go to a shop and somebody tells us, you know, do this and do that. And that analysis sometimes also create paralysis, right? So we are not able to decide. We are always scared that we are going to make a wrong decision. So my advice is that there is nothing called a perfect laptop. Don't worry about the perfect laptop. Just look for a good laptop. And that is good enough, right? Just for you. So think about Milka Singh, right? The world class, uh, you know, runner. 
Bilka Singh started running on barefoot and he did perfectly fine. And now we have a generation who is raised on running on Nike and Reebok and they are not able to beat Bilka Singh's record. So in the same way, you don't need a you know, great laptop, you don't need a perfect laptop to become a good trader. You need a decent laptop. Trading is a skill which you have to learn on top of that. So if you follow the configuration which I've already given you, you will find a good laptop to get started. So don't worry too much about that. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You will not. Right. So find a good laptop. So that is it, guys. Uh, that is what I wanted to share in this video. I hope that it will help you find a good laptop for you. What we will also do is we'll give some links in the description below so that you can, you know, at least get started from there. And whatever is the case, I wish you that you will get the good laptop that you need to kickstart your trading journey.